everybody, so I've just finished setting up my Scrivener file for The Lawn. Basically The Lawn is going to be an easter egg for my novella Missing. So what is an easter egg? An easter egg is basically something that the reader will find in the ebook and the paperback. They'll get to a certain point and they'll see a footnote that will give them a link to a free short story. That corresponds to an event that Alistair references when he runs into James. So what I've done in the Scrivener file is I've had to go, Scrivener is a writing program that I write my novels in, so I imported all the images of all the characters and the locations and then I started because I write to an outline I started importing the various parts of the outline into the actual manuscript portion so there's like a split screen and I usually put the like a description of what's going to happen in the scene in a box on the top I think it's the top left hand corner of the screen no top right hand corner of the screen there's like this little synopsis this little box that you can write the synopsis in so I've done all of that and I've reached a point now where I'm ready to start writing the story I have a funny feeling it won't be as long as what I think it will be because there's a scene in there that's needs to be shorter but there is a scene towards the end that needs to be a lot longer than what it is so I'm going to go and make myself a cup of tea, I'm going to have lunch, I won't show you that because that's boring, and then I'm going to start writing. I'm probably not going to get all of this done today, so hopefully I'll be able to get it done before Monday. Maybe this vlog will be a weird vlog, will it be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. We'll soon find out. I know I didn't sort of mention this earlier because I hadn't really decided what tea that I was going to have, but just for those of you who are curious and watched my T2, T2 haul, which I'll link in the little information icon on the top right hand corner of the screen. I'm not good with directions today. So I'm going to have a cup of jasmine tea. So it looks like I really like these pyramid style teacups. So I've had lunch and I'm back at my desk. I'm looking at Scrivener and one of the things that I've now come to realise is when I start writing I don't just flip open my computer and start writing. There are things that I actually do need to do to be able to start writing and write something very quickly and one of those is, is I'm going to go through and do scene blocking. Scene blocking is where you will write out this is what happens in the scene like this happens this happens and this happens. It's almost robotic so you just explain this happens this happens and this happens so that when I go through and actually write the scene I've already actually figured out this is exactly what happens and I'm left to describe how the scene takes place and then write the dialogue, write the scene description and just get into that sort of really creative side of writing. Sometimes this is, sometimes people refer to this as a scene outline. I tend to refer to it as scene blocking because you literally, it's like you're setting the stage. Like if you think of this particular section of the story happening on a stage and what I'm doing is, is I'm deciding this is what happens on the stage before I then go and actually describe in greater detail the event that occurs on the stage. If that makes sense. Hopefully it does. So today I might not actually get any writing done in terms of, I won't be able to show you what I've done on the screen. I could, but you, it won't read like a story, it'll just be a list of things that happen in every scene. And I have about, I'm just going to check on the screen how many scenes I have. I have about eight, scene, eight scenes. So I'm hoping these scenes will, will sort of take, will be about 750 to 1000 words in each scene possibly. And sometimes when I do scene blocking I will write dialogue as it comes to me especially if I think it's it's that good I want to remember it and then I usually improve upon it as I write the scene. Could I have said scene any more times? Sorry.
So that's what I'm going to do. So I may not actually get any of the actual story writing done. I'm still doing a lot of preparation, which is fine. I'll be able to write the story over the weekend and on Monday quicker than I would have if I didn't do this. kind of noticed that I feel the last clip is just me sitting on the computer hunched over like hunchback and typing into Excel. You, you probably can't see what's on the screen but I've decided to create an Excel spreadsheet just to help me get familiar with the scenes, work out what I need to foreshadow earlier in the story so the end of the story makes sense even though it's 10,000 words I still have to foreshadow things and I need to make it sort of slip under the radar so so when the reader gets to the end of the story they go oh yeah or, or they immediately know why things are happening and it's I haven't made it too particularly obvious. So one of the things I did is I put each scene into a particular cell in the spreadsheet. I then went through and made sure I've covered most of the plot points. I have to admit plotting for me with a short story I've discovered isn't as important as long as usually when I write a novel or a novella I will start off with the major scenes, like the major three act structure scenes, those 8 to 13 sort of major scenes and then from there I flesh out everything that happens between these scenes but because this is a short story and there's actually only eight scenes in this when I created the story I just sort of said this happens and then this happens and then this happens until I reached the end of the story and felt that it was a satisfying conclusion. I haven't wrapped the story neatly up mainly because there isn't time for it and the reader can kind of knows what happens next because the reader ends up knowing at the end of the story the reader knows who committed the crimes and why and you can kind of guess what happens next because it's designed to be read with missing so the people who will get this will be signed up will have read missing and seen it in there and seen the link to the story and read it so they know what happens I mean you can read it on its own but you sort of get what happens because you know someone's run off and call and they're calling the police and you know this person is gonna get caught, if you know what I mean. So I sort of feel like with this short story that it doesn't, that I, I'm just gonna assume you get it. You know that there are consequences to actions and these consequences are gonna come and that the reader doesn't necessarily need to see them. They know this person's getting caught because they know the person, this particular person is not in missing. That Alistair is missing, this person is missing and it's this reference he sort of mentions that this person is missing and James sort of mentions that he doesn't actually remember the events that happened because of the way the story ends for him. So it obviously doesn't end well for him. A lot of my stories don't end well for him. He always ends up injured so I have to keep a list of his injuries just so I'm not re-injuring. I'm not injuring. He doesn't have the same injuries over and over again. I'm getting creative. So yeah, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the uh, Excel spreadsheet and I'm going to go through and... I'm going to do the value shifts. I'm going to sort of, what a value shift is, is you sort of look at the scene and go, okay, this person enters the scene like this and, and they exit the scene like this in this state. So they enter the scene in one state, they exit in one another state. And it's just an easy way for me to double check that things are actually happening in the story. And if I get a value shift that's positive to positive, I think, well, why? But that never happens in my stories. It's always good. It's always good to bad, bad to even worse, maybe a bad to good at the end, possibly. It's been a while since I've read this thing. But I should, I should, I'm actually getting, I should actually get the edits for a report from my editor for Missing sometime today, early tomorrow morning. That'll be a fun read. <laughs> but back to writing.
So I'm gonna go through and do the value shifts for those eight scenes. And at this stage, I really should be ready to write. There should be no more excuses now. Everything. So the reason, part of the reason why I do this is it helps me edit the outline to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. And it just makes the uh, the revision process after the first draft, after the writing the first draft phase, much quicker. And that there's less crap to fix, basically, is what I'm trying to tell you. So I finished filling out my outline spreadsheet and I sort of figured out I've been working on preparing to write the lawn for about five, almost five hours a day. So it's been four hours and 49 minutes. And I've also work, worked out that overall since the 27th of April I've done a total of 12 hours and 19 minutes on the lawn so that's when I first got the idea and created the Evernote file and wrote down just the basic details about the title the word count the genre of the story and where it was sitting and the initial idea that I had for uh, the story so that's from that point to actually writing, fleshing out all of the scenes, figuring out like the value shifts, the stake, the conflict and, and the intensity of each scene, how I want it to feel for the reader. That's to the point of doing all of that and sort of creating character profiles and all of that, even though this story exists in a world that I've already started to create and I've written three books in, I still, I still do have to do a bit of work. So technically I could have done this in the span of two weeks possibly but it's taken me a bit longer because I I did have a I had a holiday in the US that sort of interrupted the writing of this but I'm pretty happy with the progress I've made so far so tomorrow I can literally put my fingers on the keyboard and write this thing and I've got a vague idea of how I want the next scene to start so tomorrow morning I'm gonna write my first scene what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit at this keyboard I'm going to I didn't actually get around to doing the scene blocking I'm gonna do the scene blocking for the first scene I'm gonna give myself like a 20 minute time frame to do that and then I'm gonna start writing after after that I think that will actually help me get back in the mode of writing so I'll see you tomorrow. So I'm going to start this off and discuss the elephant in the room, mainly that. In the last clip you would have noticed that I was wearing a jumper, things have changed. I didn't get around, I didn't write over the weekend, just plain and simple. I'm not going to make up excuses because that's what they are, they're, they're just excuses. I had, I prioritised other things over writing. So yes, so it's Thursday evening and I've just finished editing the vlog and I'm about to add in all the title cards and all of that to make it pretty and to make it make sense. And I sort of knew that I left the vlog and I didn't vlog over the weekend. That was apparent to me, but I did actually, I wasn't entirely sure whether I referenced that I was planning on writing over the weekend, but it turns out... When I, when I got to the end of editing the vlog, I realised that I in fact did that. I had, I had advertised that I did plan on writing. So this is just me here, taking far too long to tell you that I didn't actually get any writing done over the weekend. I've also been pretty busy this week with other sort of work-related things that I just haven't had the time. So I'm going to try and get as much work as I can today and devote Friday, which is tomorrow, to writing. Just purely writing, just simple, just so I can hit, uh, and I want to try and hit 10,000 words in, the, in a day. So that would be a different vlog. But anyway, I hope you loved this vlog. If you did, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. If you want to see more videos just like this and hit the bell icon as well because apparently you need to be hitting a lot of things now on YouTube.